This video is sponsored by Nike. You ever hear the commercial, Be Like Mike? They weren't talking about Dr. Mike, they are talking about this guy. Oh my God, guys, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. I'm officially teamed up with Nike. What am I gonna be doing with Nike? Running the LA Half Marathon, 13.1 miles come April 5th. I've never ran a half marathon before. It's my very first. I'm really nervous because I'm not really an endurance runner. I'm more like a high intensity interval type guy. This is gonna be tough. I'm really excited for it because A, it's a challenge. B, it's stepping outside my comfort zone. And one of the main reasons I'm excited about it is because Nike also wants me to test their new shoe called the React Infinity. This is the woman's shoe, this is the men's shoe. I actually prefer this one probably a little bit better. I'm a man that likes wearing pink. I guess, not a big deal. But first, I wanna to talk to you about my trip to the Nike World Headquarters. Yo, I got these Nike React Infinity shoes. They're fire, they're gonna help you build dams. You have no idea the kind of dams you could build if you get these shoes. I got you. The coolest thing right off the bat in visiting Nike World Headquarters is the feeling that you're surrounded by greatness. They have buildings dedicated to the greatest athletes in the world. I think my favorite building that I visited there was the Michael Jordan building. Growing up, Michael Jordan was one of my biggest heroes and seeing their collection on display of every single Jordan shoe that has been released to date was insane. My favorite Jordan shoe was the 17. I know it's kind of a peculiar one. Most people wouldn't say the 17, but that was the first shoe I was able to afford when I came to the US. Now, I never read the book Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, but that essentially tells the story of how Nike started. And during this tour, they showed us the intimate story of how Nike began as Blue Ribbon Sports, how the first Nike logo was developed and sold for something like $25. They showed us the first shoes that were created by Nike. Moving on, we were able to check out the different different sport facilities they had there. In fact, they let me get a few jump shots in on the basketball courts. I was draining threes, well maybe like at a 30% <laughs> completion rate, on the same court where LBJ and MJ practice at some point. Obviously also got to check out their track. There was actually some Olympic athletes training on it. I'm not gonna disclose anything, but that was uber cool. And then I was able to take to the track. It was a little wet, it was a little slippery, but I was in the zone. I was hitting my stride. Then I realized I'm not in that great shape and I became out of breath and I realized I'm gonna have to train really hard for this half marathon. <laughs> Let's talk about the React Infinity Run shoe. Nike wanted to create a shoe that would reduce running injuries. Over the last 30 years, we have not seen a reduction in running injuries, despite the fact that we're putting all these new technologies into our shoes. I'm gonna be giving you my honest feedback as to how it feels on my foot, but let's talk about the research and how they got to consider the shoe to be a running related injury reduction shoe. Over this last 30 years, most of the blame for running related injuries came from individuals who overpronate, meaning that when they run, their foot inverts a little bit, just like this. You'll oftentimes see in the edge of the sneaker on the medial side or the middle side, start to wear faster than the outer side. That could be a sign of overpronating. And because of that, a bunch of shoes hit the market that were labeled stability shoes or motion control shoes. Those shoes had maybe extra dense foam here or medial posting here, which is like a thickened material in order to help stabilize your foot for each time your foot strikes the ground. The creators of this shoe told us that they wanted to flip this whole theory on its head. And we put lots of prototypes on lots of different athletes and when we have them run, we listen to what they say. We measure all sorts of stuff while, we're, while we have them and we're evaluating them, but we're also always talking to them and listening to what they say. And when you do that with this prototype, that prototype, a different prototype, the thing that they always keep coming back to that tells us feels good is cushioning. Cushioning, a rocker style bottom so the shoe 
translates its motion well, and keeping that fly knit upper so it's really thin and breathable and light, but also a really locked down heel so you have decent stability in the back end here. And they tested it. It was a randomized controlled study of about 200 participants, male and female. They broke them up randomly into two groups, Half the groups ran in this shoe. The other half ran in the Nike Structure 22 shoe, which is a motion control shoe. What did they find? Those who ran in the React Infinity shoe here had a 52% less likelihood of developing an injury. How do they classify these running related injuries? Well, if the runners experienced pain due to running and it caused them to miss three or more runs, that considered a running related injury. You know me. When it comes to people doing medical research, I'm a skeptic first, especially if it's some kind of revolutionary new study. It's very rare that one study comes along and changes the way we've been doing things. Because the way you normally do it is you have a hypothesis generating study, then a pilot study, and then you start adapting and figuring out how to change what you're doing. In this case, they had a hypothesis. Let's do away with motion control and focus more on cushioning here. They did this first study and it was a small study. They admit that. They admit that they there's a lot that they don't know. In fact, when Jay Warbetz was giving us his speech at the Nike World Headquarters, I was was really impressed because of how many similarities there were between the research he was doing in the Nike lab to how I treat my patients. First of all, he was not afraid to say, I don't know. The challenge is that there just, there really isn't a lot of, of information that's really, really well known. Like for example, like exactly how many runners are getting injured each year. We, we don't know. What are the, the mechanisms of these injuries? We really don't know. This is a, a scenario where the, the answers aren't there. Uh, we, we have to figure this out. We want you guys to come on a journey with us so we can solve this. I appreciate that level of humility. Second, Instead of just looking at objective measures, they also ask athletes what worked for them. When there aren't these well-known scientific, you know, this knowledge, uh, where we always start is with the voice of our athletes. We work with our athletes, we, you know, put lots of different shoes on them, lots of different prototypes, and we're constantly talking to them. Sure, we're in the lab with our metrics and we're, we're, we're analyzing everything, their kinematics, their kinetics, yeah, but we're also listening to their voice and saying, you know, what feels good, what feels good, what feels good, what feels good. And when over and over and over again, the, the, the answer is the same, cushioning. When you give me cushioning and you do it right, that's what feels good. So my body feels good. Well, th that's where we're starting from. When I see my patients, yes, I look at their vital signs. Yes, I look at their lab values. But I also talk to the human sitting in front of me. There's a lot of value in that. And I, I'm glad that Nike is seeing that talking to their athletes gives them value. When I say athletes, I don't just mean their top tier athletes like LeBron James. I'm talking about weekend warriors. I'm talking about you at home who wears Nike sneakers to go for a run once a month. You're an athlete too and they're listening to you. If you're with me for the ride, I'm dropping a link down below for you to sign up for the Nike half marathon. 13.1 miles, come on baby, it's doable. We can do it together. I'm gonna to be training in the Nike React Infinity shoe, giving you my honest feedback about it. My goal is to make one video during my training to let you know how it's going, and then the second video is gonna be race day, showing you whether or not I made it to the finish line. And if I did, how was my time? If you have any predictions about how fast you think I'm gonna complete this half marathon in, drop them down below. Just please don't be so mean, because. I am a rookie when it comes to this running stuff and I really want to get better at it. And by the way, if you want to add me on the Nike Run Club app, my, name, my username is obviously Dr. Mike on that. Check me out. You could check out, see how fast I'm progressing as well. I'd love to see what you guys are doing if you're using the app as well. Part of setting good goals for yourself is to set measurable goals, attainable goals, but also to share the goals with your friends. You're my friends. I'm sharing it right here. God, I hope I don't regret this. That I want to run a two hour half marathon. This is my first ever half marathon, so this is gonna be incredibly hard, but I really wanna do it. And if you're with me, sign up. Let's do this LA half marathon together. Go for a run, have a great time. In fact, what I may just do, if you text my number, 917-336-4906, just sign up, ignore all those automated messages, make sure you're registered. I will be texting you where I'm gonna be doing some of my training runs for this half marathon. Perhaps you can join me. And remember, I can text numbers based on where you are in proximity to me. So if I'm gonna be doing a run in New York City, I'll text only those who are in New York City. If I'm gonna be doing it in LA, I'm gonna message only those in LA. So no one's getting any extra unnecessary messages. I think I'm about to go for a run right about now. Are you excited? Thanks Nike for sponsoring this video.